Uh, guys, look who we have here. Jason Barry. You may know him as Declan O'Connor from Modern Warfare 2 Warzone 2 recently. Mate, how are you? I'm good. I'm pretty good. Yeah. Excited. Yeah, you're going I'm well. A... I am. I am. I'm going pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Now, before we get into Modern Warfare and your your sort of, I would say, expertise in the Call of Duty universe, because you were in Infinite Warfare and a few others, but... Um, Talk to me, like, go back from the start. Where did it all begin for you, this this love of acting, voice acting, all of that? Where did it all begin for you, mate? Oh, well, I mean, I when I was a teenager, I kind of, well, I figured I didn't want to work in a bank or an insurance company and uh, yeah. started doing kind of amateur dramatics, much against what my parents, they didn't, they weren't happy about that at all. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not at all. And then I got a job in an insurance company, which was my worst nightmare. And I, la I lasted there about, Jeez, oh, about six weeks. And then I, yeah. I went to drama school after that. And I came out of drama school and got very lucky. I got a movie in, in England um, straight away, like two weeks out of drama school. I got a movie in England. So I moved. To, Were you moved living to, in Eng England? Or I, was or living in, I was in Dublin. Dublin yeah, at the yeah. time. Yeah. And I got the movie and went over to London, shot that for two, two months. And then I stayed. And then kind of, I guess, decent role. I, I had a nice role in Titanic. Um, I know I I, I can't believe of, that because there was another operator in Modern Warfare who was in the Titanic as well. Was there? Yeah, her name's Fanny. I don't know if you cross paths with her, but she was a very oh, small yeah. role. But it right. was just bizarre that you're both in it. Right, right. It's yeah. just such a random occurrence, and obviously, yeah, James Cameron's a legend. But um, yeah. yeah, so yeah, I did that, and then went back to the UK to a bunch of movies. Um, then moved to the States kind of 2006, 2007. And I've been kind of pretty much based here ever since, uh, working away and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you've actually been to, you know, Melbourne quite well, don't you? Where I, I do know Melbourne. Yeah. I did a yeah. movie down there um, called yeah. Muggers uh, around 2000. And uh, I married an actress called Nicola Charles, who was in um, Neighbours. Uh, classic to, Aussie show yeah yeah the Aussie show which was which was kind of cancelled and I think they just brought it back or something like that that's right yeah they oh are they bringing it back I don't know I, yeah, I did yeah. see the final episode they got a, a lot of the people back like Guy Pierce and stuff that's right they did but yeah. there's a kind of whole hoorah like the, the last ever episode and then the paper <laughs> here today says we're going to bring it back <laughs> Well, it's only been a few months, guys. Yeah, at I least know, give right? it a rest. Give, yeah. give it a couple of years, at least. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, I know Melbourne quite well. I spent a lot of time down in Melbourne. I like it a lot. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah, in LA, now kind of working away and stuff. So yeah. And a, a Call of Duty, the Call of Duty games are they the only ones, only games you've worked on, or have you worked on other games? No, they're the only games I've I've, I've worked on. I worked wow. on Call, yeah, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare was my first. I think it was the first time I ever even auditioned for a for a video game or or a voiceover part, but that was that was motion capture that one. But I think that was the first time I auditioned for a video game. Yeah, was that your first motion capture experience as well? It was. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was quite, very interesting. I remember chatting to David Herward, the actor on our great first actor, day. yeah, great actor, yeah. And I remember saying to him, I said, I'm not quite sure what, I and mean, I knew what it was, you know, yeah. of course, but I didn't quite know what the process was because you, you walk into this room that's kind of like the size of a baseball uh, sorry a basketball court and there's cameras everywhere and then you know they start putting the stuff in your face the dots and the camera here and i was like and he basically he gave me a really good note he said it's just like theater he says every actor is on all the time you do it's like when you do a film or tv or whatever you know it's going to be your shot it's your close-up it's your mid shot or whatever but on the uh, motion capture you're always on so it's like you're doing a play in the round. You just have kind of cameras all around you, a couple of crew people, and then this on your face. Um, and it was a really good note. And it was actually, I actually enjoyed doing the motion capture. It was quite freeing just because it was just, you're in the scene, you're doing it. You don't have to do it a million times. So it's, it kind of feels fresh mm -hmm. rather than close up over here for this person, close up over here for that person. And then it's on you and you kind of, you've done it 50 times before it gets to you kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. so i found it really interesting and i really enjoyed it yeah that was a really good process and, and there's some really good people on it and it was um yeah but it was a great note by david herwood yeah i i feel like 
it was was Conor McGregor in that game as well. He, he was he, I fellow was, Irishman. I know, and <laughs> and he was a big fan. I mean, I, I was a big fan of his. Um, I went to see a few of his fights before I met him. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. It was actually me going with the Brian Bloom, who was one of the creators of of Call of Duty: Infinite Warfare, and and the, the main Warfare. star. Yeah, yeah. And we were ha- we watched one of McGregor's fights at um at, Bri- at Brian's place. And I think he got the idea then of trying to drag him in just to do a couple of scenes. And, yeah. and thankfully he brought me in to do a scene with him. Um, and then it turns out he was a fan of a TV show I did over, over in Ireland. So at least we had something to talk oh, about. Oh, nice. Yeah, so that was pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. And did you ever meet Kit Harrington? Because he was in that as oh, well. Oh, they did all that stuff. In, By himself, yeah. Over in London. Yeah. Yeah, they did all that stuff. I think it was they wanted to use um, Tom Hardy. Oh, really? Yeah, but I think there might have been some scheduling difficulties and then they went with Kit Harrington after that as well, yeah. But that, wow. that, stuff, that stuff was all done over in London, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so you shot that in LA? Yeah, they shoot it in LA. The Infinite War, it, it, Infinity War have their um, their own kind of little mini studio that they use. And how, so, many, how many days were you on that? Oh. Do you remember? I'd say probably over a six-month period, maybe 20 days possibly. Wow, yeah. yeah. Shit. Yeah, so that's actually was, a fair chunk. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was a really good process. Made some good friends on it, um, but it was a really interesting creative gig that just kind of fell on my lap, and I was I was grateful for you. And would you do it again? Do you think? Would you like to do it again? Yeah, I would like to do it again. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, I mean, you know, I know Cameron. He's he's doing all the motion capture stuff, or Jim Cameron's doing all the motion capture stuff right now. Everything's motion capture, so at least I have that kind of in my wheelhouse. But I would definitely want to do it again, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and what? How different is you know working on a movie like Titanic versus doing motion capture versus doing voice acting? Because they're all they're all so different. How do you spread yourself across all three? sort of medium it's kind of interesting i did an interview for because i think titanic is like 25 years or something released yeah so there's like yeah. i did an interview for it yesterday and it's just interesting the difference because i think if titanic was to be made now it would be all green screen yeah and, uh, back i back then it was the actual ship like you the ship was the size of titanic you're walking on the ship you're walking on the different decks and they built all the sets that they could tilt so you you're, you're actually in it you're in that real world Whereas with the motion capture stuff, you're not in the real world. You're just standing there in this kind of really skin tight <laughs> suit that you look ridiculous in. I'm very self conscious yeah. um, <laughs> with yeah. stupid with dots in your face, and there's nothing yeah. there. So I think it's really it's kind of an interesting like to go from that real world to the nothing world. But at the end of the day, it's still it's still just acting. You're still trying to create a character. You're yeah. still trying to be in that space. You're still trying to kind of try and feel as real as possible. Um, but yeah, the difference in, in those two things, those two jobs between like Call of Duty and Titanic is it's they're so it's chalk and cheese. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Like chalk and cheese. Yeah. Yeah. What about um this game, Modern Warfare 2? How did this one come about? Because um, you know, you're you're representing uh Ireland in this one. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's always good to fly the flag. Yeah. yeah. I was. I think it was. I, I think I just put myself on tape, uh, uh, an audio audition. Um, yeah. And I. I think at that time when I did the audio audition, I don't think they knew what nationalities they wanted to oh, you. So you didn't do Irish. No, I did Irish. Oh, you did um, Irish. Okay. I think they probably just took a lot of voices in mm. from all over the world and as they were creating the characters. So. It's not, I wasn't specifically auditioning like with the lines or anything like that. It was just kind of made up stuff just to hear your voice. Um, yeah. And then obviously they honed in on what characters they wanted and where did they want where they wanted them to be from. And they decided obviously to, that they wanted to, to use an Irish Irish character. Irish Do you voice. think your work on the other games helped? Or I mean, I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope they'd want me back. Um, I I would imagine so. I mean, I know the guys quite well, so yeah. I think. As soon as they decided the character was going to be Irish, they were probably going to use my voice. Yeah. But if the character, if they decided not to use an Irish guy, well then I probably wouldn't have been involved in this in this game. You were you did some additional voices for the first Modern Warfare as That's well right. in 2019. Yeah. yeah. What what was it in that? Just some background pickup stuff. Just kind or? of background shouting yeah. and screaming and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Nothing 
no, no kind of specific character or anything like that. Just um, random. Is that just like a one session thing? Uh, I think we did two sessions on that. Yeah. Like screaming in the background and you know, <laughs> yeah, just random stuff. You know. And you would have done heaps of screaming. Well, not but like very military chatter. You know, battle chatter on this yeah. game. Yeah. Does, how do you? How does that go with your voice? Like, are you stuffed? Because kind of, you do the sessions are they're usually like four hour sessions. Um, yep. And they they break it into three. They have kind of light chatter, mid chatter, heavy chatter. Right. So they try and keep the heavy chatter as much as they can till the end of the session because they don't want to destroy your voice. Yeah. But you might dip a little bit into the heavy chatter as you're going along, but you'll keep you'll keep the majority of that at the end. And I mean, you do feel I did feel the first couple of sessions like my my voice the next day was really kind of raspy and quite sexy actually. My wife said, <laughs> <laughs> so I should do more sessions of shouting. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so they, they kind of break it down and, and in between in the sessions as well, on the hour, they'll stop for 10 minutes. Just yes, to give you a yes. break, um, let you have a drink or something or just kind of clean your clean your throat out and stuff like that. So so, yeah, they break it down. But a lot of this, the, 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 the loud cl- the chatter can be pretty intense and it does it definitely does get to your voice. So the voice is similar to you, but I feel like it's it's you dialed up a little bit, right? It's, yeah, I think. Well, look, I mean, it's I you really getting getting into the Irish heritage. It's me like. kind of going yeah. back, yeah, yeah. because I'm, I left Ireland and years ago, like, yeah, years ago, along like 1994, 95 or something. So you probably so have I, to go back back of your brain and sort of find that, or is it just there? Well, you know what the funny thing is, is that at times I felt I was overdoing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. At times I, get I felt it. like I was, I was being a little bit too Irish, like, <laughs> but it was. I mean, it's obviously. It sounds real because it is real, and I was going back to the way I used to speak when I was when I was younger. But it's funny how your brain and the back of your brain you start talking to yourself, and you're going, "Am I overdoing this? Am I going to get like, <laughs> destroyed for doing a crappy Irish accent?" <laughs> and I'm actually Irish, but no. See, yeah, it was. I, it's funny actually because when we were doing one of the directors, because I, I you have different directors depending on who's available because there, there, there's, yeah, so yeah, yeah. there's so much yeah, going on. There's yeah. so much going on. And I think I hadn't been in for like two or three weeks and I started the session and straight away they went, no, nope. because you haven't been in for a couple of weeks. You're sounding a little bit more like an American twang in your voice. So I go back and then we started listening again to Connor mm. and I was like, oh yeah, shit, I got to be, you know, more this and that and that and this, you know? So <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. I've got a few fan questions here that people have sent through, if you don't mind um, answering a few. There's some, a couple of funny ones as well. Um, it's great to see an Irish operator in a Call of Duty game, especially the sense of humor and the phrases that come along with that. Did you rehearse for the part um, or did Infinity Ward per- approach you? And what was your favorite voice line that you can remember? Um we didn't rehearse. Uh, the writer did a lot of research on uh, Irishisms. Irishisms, yeah. Yeah, no, some some were completely way off, like stuff that we probably would say back in the 1920s. So yeah. I had to like, yeah. gar- gosh, and all that kind of top of the morning. <laughs> so in fairness, yeah. in fairness to them, they really kind of, there was no rehearsals. So you went in on the session, but mm. if the line didn't make sense or the word was was not right they would actually i would say no from dublin you would say this you would say that so they were happy to kind of change that um okay so yeah so like the, instead of saying be jesus i might say jesus you know so just simple things like so like, like the, the research was brilliant on what they did it's just the odd word here and there it was just just didn't either feel right isn't spoken now or wouldn't be spoken by a person from dublin maybe somebody from belfast might say it so it was just mm fixing them little bits like that in terms of I, honestly i can't remember anything i said i mean like, <laughs> even on the sessions even on the sessions i would finish the sessions uh, and I, would go to the director, so I have no idea what i just said there but i tell you why because it comes at you so fast oh yeah like i think we had like a thousand lines to do or something like that something like that yeah yeah because so you're, you're even you're even got lines where you you have to cough for 30 right, seconds exactly. right <laughs> yeah exactly um, and then you can put you under water or you, like it's just yeah, yeah. Like there's a there's a lot that that i mean if i was to see them now i'd remember them but when you're doing them yeah. so fast they just come at you so fast um yeah i mean 
I maybe mean, I think I might have said banjaxed. Or you've, you're banjaxed or something like. I love that word banjaxed. So I think maybe I said to somebody, "You're banjaxed" or something like that. But yeah, I don't really remember much. He he's one that um, someone said, "Don't shoot me, you dope." Do you remember you saying dope. that one? You dope. Yeah, don't shoot me. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. So I probably uh, they probably had some they probably had something different because I wouldn't have said they would have had dope. So I would have mm-hmm. said no. Dope is probably a better word. And it's great that they creatively wanted it to feel as 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 real as possible you know i mm. mean like yeah. they really wanted it to feel like an actual guy from from dublin or from ireland and it's interesting like a lot of people on twitter irish people in particular have been kind of getting in touch going it's really great that it's an actual it actually sounds like it's yes. somebody from dublin yes rather than like like you're li- like lucky charms or like a leprechaun running around yes yes you know, no, people it, appreciate like, it be careful with that you know yes. you know yeah. And I mean, the thing about Call of Duty is, and I know like Brian Bloom and stuff, he, they, they want it to be as real and as authentic as possible. So you want to like really feel the experience of it. So mm. anything that will throw you off like an accent that doesn't quite fix, that doesn't quite work can be quite off-putting. So they're pretty good at that kind of stuff of trying to make it feel authentic and real. 100%. Um, your character, someone asked, because your character in the game has a different outfit for Burger King. I don't know if you've seen it. No, because um, <laughs> there was a there was a promotion with Burger King. Um, you know, <laughs> if you if you go to Burger King, you got and, Hungry Jacks down there, isn't it? It's Hungry Jacks down here. Yeah, you, you right. remember? I love that. Yeah. yeah, but everywhere else it's Burger King. And um, yeah. if you bought a meal, you get this skin in the game of your character. And so really? someone, yeah, <laughs> so someone, I'll have to show you. I have to send it to you. Yeah. Someone asked, um, do you like Burger King in real life? <laughs> I mean, I haven't oh, I, I mean I haven't been in a Burger King in a very <laughs> no, me time. either. The last I time mean, I was in a Hungry Jacks, I uh, was severely ill. That was right. bad. Yeah, yeah, I mean <laughs> it's been a very long time. I mean, I will say I prefer the Burger King fry, the Hungry Jacks or Burger King fries to McDonald's fries, but that's about all I remember. Oh, that's what I remember fast food so, yeah, I wasn't expecting that question I know man it's so random it's so random uh, um, are you originally from Dublin Jason I am born wow. in the north side of Dublin yeah what was the most challenging part of the process on this or infinite warfare the most challenging I think <laughs> Like I had a great time in the motion capture side so that I just had a lot of fun with that. I think the most challenging thing is the actual heavy duty armor army shouting just to try mm. and keep it on a level, to try and make it feel real. I think the interesting thing is like when these guys, like these special op guys or these soldiers and they're, they're in intense situations, you can't be sound scared when you're screaming or there's something coming at you. So there has to be an element of realism to it. So I think that was the hardest part for me when doing the, the, the hardcore, like we're under fire, we're about to die or somebody's about to die. Not like completely going off the top and sounding scared, but keeping it like that military thing as in I might die, but this is what I'm here to do, but I'm not going to die whilst mm-hmm. also feeling those kind of emotions and stuff. So that's that kind of level of trying to keep it within the army box of, of the dialogue army box and not making it, keeping it real, but not making it sound scary or you're frightened or something like that. Mm, interesting. Uh, were you, is it true that you were a butcher as a teenager, Jason? Yeah, I used to. Trying to have someone finish that. <laughs> I really are. I mean, that's a good one, that. Yeah, I used to. Well, I was, I was an apprentice butcher in a, in a supermarket called Super Quinn in a shopping center called north side shopping center yeah so maybe yeah. someone know maybe someone's been there maybe you yeah. i mean again, <laughs> again i didn't last very long but I was, <laughs> yeah I, I was probably there for i probably would have been 15 i think so it was obviously oh, wow, it was a yeah. part-time job that i did at the weekends but i and i was like i said i was an apprentice butcher but i, I didn't see my my career in being a butcher lasting very long. So I, I didn't stay there for very long. But yeah, that's a good question. That yeah. So we got right. Burger King and we've got butchers. So it's yeah. And yeah. now I've got one for you from me. Yeah. Are you is it true you're a marathon runner enthusiast? Yeah, I I I do marathons pretty much every year. Uh um, tell me how do I get into shape? 
to do this because I want to run. Oh, well, I, to be honest, originally why I started doing marathons was I actually put on a bit of weight. Um, okay. Yeah. And because I used to be very fit and active um, as a kid. And when I moved to London, I kind of just, it just went, you know, I just didn't mm. think about it. Um, so I put a bit of weight on and then I just started running again. And it's a very slow process to get into it. And then there was a there's, a there's a magazine called TV Times in the UK, which is like a TV magazine. And they had a running team with actors on it and they were like sponsor you. So I thought that's a good way to get into it. And they asked me, would I join and do the races? And then I started doing it and doing it and kind of became very good at it. Um, and then we would do the London Marathon. And I remember, nice. I remember doing the London Marathon and who's the chef? Uh, Gordon Ramsay, like we were all the celebrity. I wasn't really a celebrity, but I was in the celebrity team. So yeah. Gordon Ramsay wanted to win it because he's like a big triathlon guy or something like that. And I beat him. I was the only actor to come in. I was the only person to come in under three. Nice. He wasn't, nice. Too, happy. He wasn't too happy about it because I remember we were in the room afterwards and he was getting a massage or something. And you could see he was kind of seething a little bit. He was he, pissed. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's a very competitive guy. He, he, yeah, I mean, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. Yeah. Uh, Angry Crusader, he says, why is your character so damn cool, Jason? Um, I, <laughs> I mean, maybe it's written that way. No, I, no I probably, it's, it's all you, mate. Well, well, well. So we'll see, yeah, I think maybe because they allowed it to be real, I guess. They allowed it to be real. And to give them a sense of humor, make you feel... Like you want to go into battle with this guy. I think that was the idea of like, if you want somebody to go with, you go with this guy and you have your back and there'll be yeah. a, little bit, it's a little bit of sense of humor as you, as you go as well. Kind of thing. Yeah. I like that. Um, did they actually give you much backstory at all? Do you remember? Or was no, it just no, barely kind of, any? Yeah. just went in and um, uh, I mean, literally you go in and you just start and then you, they, they probably let you do a few lines to see if, they're hearing what they want to hear yeah uh, they kind of wanted a like i said they wanted they wanted a cockiness i guess of conor mcgregor yeah throw a bit of humor in try and make it as real as possible and that was kind of it and then you but just, they don't go they don't get go into like any any other details do they no yeah. they, they don't like do a method and send you out to war for six months and you come back shell-shocked <laughs> <laughs> no, none of that it's pretty it's pretty fast actually uh, yeah it's only what four or five sessions yeah overall. Think, yeah four or five sessions yeah. yeah uh beautiful have you been able to check out your work at all in in this game or infinite warfare have you seen i have some never of stuff? No, never never wow. played i've never played a, a computer game in my life um i don't know why that is just just haven't uh i mean i've seen images and stuff um yeah yeah yeah, but no, I've never actually um, played it. Although I know my daughter's boyfriend is obsessed with it, so so that's oh, a bit of, you get a bit of a kick out of that. So, so major he might brand. be using he might be using the Burger ski, uh, Burger King skin, right? Right, playing as you, <laughs> yeah, playing as his yeah. girlfriend's yeah. dad. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, some nice brownie points with the, with my daughter for that. Yeah, so. yeah, that's good. Um, do you want to say anything to the COD fans that have tuned in today? Is there anything you want to pass on to them? Oh, no, Thanks. just, yeah, I mean, just keep enjoying the game. And I think with the, um, you know, the Infinity War guys, they're fantastic. And I think they're just going to keep churning out some really good games. Like they're really, they're really committed to it feeling real. Um, mm -hmm. And constantly keep pushing the envelope, uh, especially with the tech as well. The tech is getting better every, I mean, I, my wife was watching television and the trailer for the game came on and she went, it's an actual trailer for a movie and I'm cause it's so it's getting so good. Yeah. Um, and I wonder actually sometime if, if in the future it'll go into kind of virtual reality territory. Yeah. And I chatted, I chatted to, to the guys about that. And Brian Bloom was saying probably eventually it's just the tech is not there yet for that. Mm. Like that would be a completely submersive game. If you're actually in virtual reality world running around doing what, doing what you do in the game, I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, but no, to the cop people, like it's 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 a great game and it's great. They're great to work with. And I think they're just going to keep trying out some great stuff. Yeah. And do you have any other future projects that you wanted to mention or that we should look out for? No, I'm, I mean, it was just that. And like I said, I got cool. a couple of scripts that I'm working on and going to yeah. hopefully do something next year. So, yeah. So it's kind of got nice. my 
Got a lot going on with that. Beautiful. Thank you for taking the time today, Jason. We really appreciate it, mate. No problem at all. Uh, before I let you go, is um, can can Connor say anything to Dan? Is that possible? Can Connor say anything to Dan? <laughs> yes, I could say something like, you're going to be banjacks, you dopey bollocks. Something, like, something along the lines of that. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Thank you, mate. I appreciate right. it. Have a, have a great day, brother. All right. You take care All of right. yourself. Thanks for the Bye. time, mate.